October the 24th is World Polio Day, an opportunity to highlight global efforts towards polio, towards a polio-free world and honor those who are in the forefront of seeing that this fight is successful. On August the 25th, 2020, the African region was officially certified as World Polio Free. Uh, with the African region certification, five of the six WHO regions representing over 90% of the world population are now free of wild polio virus. While we celebrate this Africa-led public health achievement, the polio program remains focused on defeating polio in all of its forms. Um, to help us um, look at this, we have Dr. Tunji Funcho, a chair of the Rotary Nigeria's National Polio Plus Committee. He joins us via Skype. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure having this conversation with you because you're one of those who's put yourself into this matter of ending polio across Nigeria, Africa, and indeed the world. But as we celebrate this day today, uh, yeah, October 24th, what, how do you feel? Uh, I have a, uh, I feel a sense of elation uh, and to some extent a sense of relief that we are celebrating our first uh, World Polio Day post-certification of Africa as a polio-free region uh, and in particular uh, the polio-free status that Nigeria has been granted having gone four years without a case of wild polio virus. Mm. Uh, so there the, the, the is, you know, cause... Uh, to celebrate and celebrate all of us who have been uh, steadfastly and uh, tenaciously working in the last 35 years, you know, to get to where we are today, the polio-free Nigeria. Now, but while we talk about Nigeria being free of a wild polio virus in the last four years, and yes, we've been certified and time to celebrate, there are still pockets of, um, if I may use the word, ignorance here and there, where people are still somewhat confused, where wild polio free, but there's that, that other one called it, the acquired polio disease, as the case may be. Could you just explain how that works and what should be done? Oh, well, uh, yes. You, you, I think you're referring to vaccine-derived, you know, polio, vaccine -derived. polio virus. Yeah, now, vaccine-derived polio virus uh, is, uh, is a consequence of our inability to uh, immunize the uh, majority of our children. In other words, our routine immunization coverage is still quite low. So there's a large uh, percentage of our children who have not been immunized against the polio virus. And when you have the vaccine virus, which is uh, an attenuated virus, in other words, uh, the vaccine contains a virus that is not dead, uh, but has been weakened enough to be able to um, stimulate the body to produce immunity against the actual live virus. When mm. that vaccine is passed out in the stool uh, by a child and has opportunity to fester in the environment, comes into another child, by the time it makes another three rounds, you see, in nature, provides the opportunity for most of its creation to, uh, to survive. One of the ways that viruses survive is to mutate, is to change the genetic uh, composition so that they're able to withstand um, uh, negative uh, stresses in the environment. That's what this vaccine virus does. It's over time in an environment that is unsanitary and children are not immunized, uh, it gradually mutates and become infective. And that is what we call the vaccine-derived uh, polio. That is usually uh, not as difficult, you know, to get rid of as the wild polio virus. Usually with uh, efficient outbreak response, we usually are able to put a lead on it within six months. Mm -hmm. And we already started that, you know, uh, last, uh, just last, uh, from last Saturday uh, up till uh, Wednesday, Thursday uh, in Sokoto State, uh, we carried out an outbreak response uh, just to put a lead on the uh, vaccine derived that we had there in January. And we're quite certain by the time we do another round of that, we'll be able to put an entry. We've done that before, so uh, that doesn't actually pose a problem. But we want to make sure that no child 
is ever paralyzed by any type of the polio virus. Okay, you know, the, in the last conversation, we were talking about mental health, and one of the questions I asked Dr. Ogunubi had to do with the fact that ha the information about mental health hardly gets to the rural communities in our, in our sphere. Um, but you talked about immunization to... Uh, Immunization and clean environments can help a great deal. Now that we are wild polio free, the other polio that appears to be in some areas, immunization and clean environments can help to sort that. Again, I know that there's a tendency to look at only the rural areas when it comes to that, that bit of action or quick response. But even in some urban areas, you have unclean environments and you have pockets of um, areas where children are not immunized. Is that also in focus? Yes, every, every corner of this country is in focus. Um, we also had, you know, one episode of uh, the vaccine-derived, you know, polio virus uh, in, in the local government in, in Lagos about a month ago in, in an environmental sample, thankfully not in a child. And we're watching that. There is no part of this country that we do not have surveillance system to pick up any virus. As far as environmental sanitation is concerned, we have an army of volunteers, uh, particularly in, in the high-risk areas of polio, uh, who educate families about uh, keeping a clean environment and hygiene. But you see, a lot of these areas don't have portable drinking water. And part of our efforts is, apart from advocating to the government to provide these facilities, we are also, as part of our program, providing clean drinking water. And we've done that virtually across this country. Uh, as I speak, in the last uh, couple of years, we have done about 50 of these boreholes. Some of them solar powered, some of them powered by generators, and some of them because of the uh, uh, low population of those areas by hand pumps. Uh, it has to be a multifaceted effort. but. Continuing communication and education is very vital. We have people on ground who are doing that uh, in other areas of health intervention, not only in hygiene, but uh, in issues regarding you know, nutrition, uh, breastfeeding, and so on. Uh, we need to continue doing that, and uh, we need to get all our partners, including the government, continuously involved uh, in providing an environment that is safe and clean uh, and that will discourage transmission of, of any of the uh, infectious diseases, particularly those that affect children. Mm. But when, in all of this, there's this we're, we're actually celebrating the World Polio Day 2020 in the midst of a pandemic. But there's also that, indeed, you talked about the need to celebrate. But how is that going to affect the celebration, seeing that there's still a pandemic out there, and yet we're celebrating being polio-free? Yes, well, our celebration this year, as you may have observed, is very low-key. Um, usually, we paint the town red and blue and green and yellow. Uh, but uh, because of the pandemic uh, and, and the need to keep the protocol, but also because of the mood of the nation uh, in view of what has happened in the last couple of weeks, you know, with the NSAS protest, uh, uh, we are very, very sensitive to the mood of the nation. So... Uh, our celebration this year is very low-keyed. Uh, we've not done any road matches where we go out in our thousands uh, to create awareness about polio. Uh, we're doing most of our work uh, on social media uh, and indoors just to keep alive the need for us to finish the job we have started because the work in Nigeria is not done. We still need to keep polio out of Nigeria. And the only way to do that is to ensure that we continue immunizing our children. So even if the virus comes back, the child is protected. We need to have clean environments and we need to continue our campaigns as well, uh, which we have plans to do. It's our closing moment here. So let's look at the practicality of some of those things you've talked about as we celebrate and look forward to the future. Let's look at the practical side. The question of funding will come into play. The question of buying as well. What's the plan around all of this? Well, uh, let me start from the last, you know, aspect. You know, in terms of buying, I think we've made tremendous, you know, progress. 
uh, one of you know uh, what we call game changer in, in our buying approach. It's it's our traditional and religious leadership. Uh, we in the last uh, almost six six years now, uh, we've had the you know traditional leaders you know council for polio eradication and other infectious diseases, and they have been able to get the buy-in of their communities. This has been tremendously uh, very helpful to the program. So buy-in has you know not been a major part of our challenges in recent times. As far as funding is concerned, yes, funding will remain uh, a very major aspect, you know, of, of the program. Uh, we started off with a, with, with a budget of 120 uh, to eradicate by year 2000, uh, but now we, we are almost hitting 20 billion US dollars across the world. Uh, our our advocacy effort is going to what is going to assist us. We're going to get the government to continue appropriating adequately for health in particular, but, you know, for vaccine uh, uh, preventable diseases as well, including polio. Uh, we also advocate to governments, uh, you know, around the world who, though are polio-free, continue to contribute to the World Global Polio Education Initiative funding for, for polio. So our work is going to be a little bit more difficult, but we are determined to ensure that we keep the funds, you know, coming from our traditional donors and also looking for a new partners who will assist us in ensuring that we keep polio at zero in Nigeria and Africa. But very importantly, our ultimate goal of all the eradication uh, by eradicating polio from Pakistan and Afghanistan, that are the only two remaining countries with the wild polio virus. And we're certain we will get there. All right, thank you very much for this day, and we wish you a worthy and enjoyable celebration of the World Polio Day 2020. Thank you very much. Dr. Tunji Funche is the chair of Rotaries Nigeria National Polio Plus Committee, and he joined us via Skype.